Now, war is hell, and the Russian military inflicts that hell on civilians. They take pride in it, uh, for lack of a better term. So uh, it, things are getting worse. It's a tale of two wars right now for the Ukrainians. For the Ukrainian military, things are getting significantly better. They're starting to push the Russians back. The Russian offensive have stalled, and now the Ru Ukrainians are able to counterattack. For the Ukrainian civilians, things are getting much, much worse. We're going to start north here. Uh, and the Russians had pushed all the way into Kyiv just in the past couple of minutes. That 36-hour curfew in Kyiv has expired, and the Russians have not been able to move into the city. In fact, the Ukrainians have pushed them out just a little bit. We'll show you here on the last map. These are the two lines that held for the Ukrainians, and they've been able to push the Russians back here and here, very importantly, they've been able to get rid of a lot of the Russian armor that was on the high ground here, shooting down into downtown Kyiv. One of the most horrific things that I have seen in all of my years covering war happened in Cherniv. This is just here up north of Kyiv, and one of the last holdout towns that the Russians captured as they moved south. That's where the 40-mile-long convoy was. This is the video from a bread line in that town. Ten people were there in a line to get bread. Food is in extraordinarily short supply in Ukraine right now, and one of the Russians' main battle tactics is to starve cities into submission. And that's what they did there, and as people lined up for bread, they came, the Russians came, and shot them, many of them, with their hands in the air. There's few things more horrific, but that's what we have video of. You can imagine the atrocities we do not have video of. As we said, there's been that counterattack where they begun to push the Russians out here and here. These were some of the best Russian forces. This was the very beginning, you might remember, of the attack. They finally pushed down to Kyiv. So as these units are getting decimated by the Ukrainians, and the Ukrainians now know that they are getting resupplied, that counteroffensive is really making a huge difference, especially in Hostomel and Irpin. As we zoom in, those two cities, that was near the airports, that is doing an amazing job at pinning the Russians down and forcing them to fight now on the defense. The counteroffensives other also happening down in the south. You might remember there was a lot of discussion of Kherson. That was the first major city that the Russians were able to take. They had come out of Crimea, moved on Kherson. There's a major counterattack there as the Russians were trying to push out. They got smacked badly by the Ukrainians. And this is a major city, a very important one for the Russians. We'll take you and show you some of the video from the airport near Kherson. And this is a satellite photo of the burning helicopters at that airport. Uh, this is equipment that the Russians can simply not afford to continue to lose. This is video from the Ukrainians as they drove through the airport after they had attacked it. You've got burning helicopters, you've got burning tanks. There is a lot of armor and a lot of equipment that the Russians lost here that is not easy for them to resupply. Why is it not easy for them to resupply? Because of where it is. Most of the Russian equipment that was in Crimea, controlled by Russia, has moved out here and moved out here. Very difficult to put any more forces here, which makes you think that it is likely Odessa is going to last a lot longer. That will be very important for the Ukrainians. It gives them one last port here. Mariupol, we have talked about for a long time. That's been under siege by the Russians now for a couple of weeks. It's the place the Russians have done the best, but the city there is still holding out, hence why the Russians' tactics have gotten even more heinous and even more brutal. The Russians bombed a theater that hundreds, if not thousands, of people had been using as a shelter. You can see the theater there uh, that has been decimated. The thought is there could be hundreds of people uh, in that theater, how you know the barbarity of what was done, this is the before picture of the theater written on the ground, just in the upper right-hand part of your screen. In Russian was the word children. This was a children's shelter that the Russians intentionally bombed. So that is the message to the rest of Ukraine. That is what's coming. The Russians right now are really trying to make a push in the one last place they can, which is up here in the northeast. Kharkiv has still held. Uh, that's been key. But remember, we've been talking a lot about this huge Ukrainian force down here 
on the eastern side of the country. That has been the main objective of the Russians to come down here, come here, and then come up from the south. And if they're able to cut off this Ukrainian force, it could be a very, very difficult time for the Ukrainians. They have the ability to pin that force in and then effectively slaughter them. We're going to zoom in one more time here. This takes us all the way out. We'll show you Kharkiv for a minute, the assault on the country that is continuing. President Vladimir Zelensky had this to say to members of Congress. He talked so much in that uh, discussion, Marty, the speech that he gave about the need for the United States to step up and do something. Clearly, the United States is doing a lot as we talked about, though, Marnie, it is not everything that the president asked for. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.